Hey, do you want a new MacBook for your birthday? Uh, okay, so uh, it says here to upgrade the storage to two terabytes. It's going to be an extra 800 US dollars. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's no surprise that Apple products are expensive. Many people can barely afford the base model MacBook Air and have to save up for months just to be able to buy one. Upgrades such as increased storage are just not an option for 95% of people due to either not being able to justify the cost or simply not being able to afford it. So what if I told you there's a way to get two terabytes of storage on your Mac but for only one third of the cost of what Apple charges, or about 240 US dollars instead of 800 US dollars. You'll also get to keep this storage option if you replace your Mac in the future. Sure, the storage won't be as fast and it's not internal, it'll be external so you have to carry it around with you, but those are really the only negatives. And you have to ask yourself if those two negatives are worth an additional 560 US dollars. For many people, the 256 gigabyte option Option of internal storage is enough for their programs and essential files and large items like footage, pictures or even games can be stored externally. Yes, you can install games and applications to your external drive. Watch the video in the top right to see how. In my search to find the next best storage option, I came across NVMe M.2 enclosures. They're relatively inexpensive and allow you to connect NVMe M.2 SSD drives via a USB or Thunderbolt port directly to your computer. I use M.2 drives in my Windows editing PC, but I've never used them externally via an enclosure. Now, before I get into the rest of the video, if you really need an internal storage upgrade and you can easily afford Apple's expensive upgrade options, go with that. It's faster and you won't have to carry a drive around with you. However, the drive I put together only cost me about 240 US dollars for two terabytes, which is so much cheaper than Apple's upgrade option. First, you'll need an M.2 SSD. I recommend this crucial one as it's relatively inexpensive and crucial is a good brand. You can buy a different storage capacity if you want, such as 500 gigabytes or a terabyte, or even a completely different brand. Just make sure the drive type is M.2 NVMe SSD. I'll have links in the description for all compatible parts that I recommend. Then you will also need an enclosure. I will have a video testing three different types of enclosures to pick the best one. Each enclosure has its own pros and cons, but I'll leave that for a separate video. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using the pluggable M.2 NVMe enclosure, which although it is the cheapest option I tested, it actually performs really well and is the one I personally use. So let's jump into the studio and set this drive up. So building this drive is actually super, super easy. As I said before, you just need the enclosure, which is the pluggable. USB 3.1 Gen 2 NVMe SSD enclosure, and also the M.2 drive, which as you can see here, I have the P1 Crucial. There is a P2 version out, which is a little bit better. That's what I've linked in the description. So if we just take both of these out of their boxes, so you can see here with the pluggable enclosure, you get a few bits and pieces. So you get the actual enclosure itself, which doesn't need any kind of tools. You also get a couple of cables. So you get a short USB-C to USB-A cable. You also get a USB-C to USB-C cable. And you also get some little bits and pieces here. So some thermal pads, um, some little rubber screws there. Uh, again, it is toolless, but these little screws you don't need tools for. And obviously some instructions. So nothing too crazy. Now the M.2 NVMe drive is very similar. You don't really get much in the box, but you don't really need it. So you get an instruction manual and you also get the actual M.2 drive itself, which as you can see there is pretty small. Okay, so let's actually build this thing. Now you can see here there are two little arrows and then at the bottom there, there's kind of like a lock slash unlock. All you need to do is just flick that down and this whole thing will slide out. And this is where you actually install the M.2 SSD. So you simply grab the M.2 SSD. You want to line up this part. You just want to pop that in until it clicks. And then you have a little rubber part here and you basically just want to push this down 
until it's under the rubber. Sometimes it's easier just to use your fingernail to pull it back. So you can push it down like that. And as you can see, that's fully installed without any kind of tools. Now you can install the included heat pads on the top here. I'm gonna leave that till later. It is gonna help with the transfer between the actual drive and the exterior of the case. But for now, all we need to do is literally just slide this in and it clicks shut and you are good to go. This is completely finished. Okay, so now that we have our M.2 NVMe drive, what are our competitors? So what are we up against? Of course, obviously we have the upgradable Apple option that starts at 200 US dollars and goes all the way up to 800 US dollars. The next option we have is something I've talked about in previous videos, and that is something like a Samsung T5 SSD. Now pros of this is it's relatively inexpensive and it's relatively quick. Um, you know, pretty easy to connect, just a USB-C to USB-C. But the big con to this is that it's not quite as fast as this particular one over here. And when I say not quite as fast, this thing is almost three times as fast as this. And one thing I forgot to mention is this will actually be cheaper. The next option we have is your standard just SSD drive. Now what you can do is you can buy one of these and then you can also buy an adapter and then this will actually just plug directly into your Mac as well. Again, similar cons to the T5 SSD. This is slower and this is also a lot clunkier to use. You have to lug around this weird adapter for it, but it is another relatively inexpensive option. Now the final choice is your very, very standard and typical hard drives. This is a two terabyte hard drive from Seagate. Very, very cheap. These things cost you almost nothing, but the trade-off, they're big, they're clunky, they're sometimes loud, and they're very, very slow, especially compared to all of these. So right now, as you can see, I've just ordered them in order from slowest to fastest here. So let's take a quick look at this one. Okay, so first things first, let's actually plug this into the computer. Now you can see I'm using an M1 MacBook Pro here. Again, just completely base model spec, 256 gig, eight gigabytes of RAM. You can see the USB-C cable I'm using here is actually quite long. This is just a aftermarket one from Pluggable, so the same brand. Um, so I'm just gonna connect the drive to that and just put it to the side. Now it does come with this USB-C to USB-C cable. It's a little bit short, so I suppose a little bit more portable, but if you are using it on a desk setup like I am, you can get a really cheap, longer one that might make it a little bit easier for you to use. Now, as you can see, it has popped up in the top right-hand corner. If it's not popping up there, you can go to Disk Utility and you'll probably need to format the drive. I'll leave a link in the top right-hand corner right now showing you a video on how to do that and also some troubleshooting steps if it doesn't pop up. But generally, you'll want to format it as a APFS volume like I have here. You don't have to, you can choose other formats, but this is gonna be the most compatible with Apple devices if you intend on only using it with a Mac. If you intend on using it with a Windows computer as well, you can choose XFAT. But again, watch the video I linked for more info on that. Okay, so moving on, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a Blackmagic disk speed test on this NVMe drive, and we'll see what kind of speeds we're getting just right off the bat. So let's jump into the screen and I'll show you. Okay, so closing down disk utility, Let's open up Black Magic Speed Test, and we're going to make sure we've selected our NVMe drive with the enclosure. We're gonna open that, and we're going to start the speed test. So right off the bat, you can see here the speeds are pretty good. We're getting about 850 megabytes per second write speed, and about the same, so 830 megabytes per second read speed on the disk test. This is doing five gigabyte files. You can see down here the compatibility section. This is gonna be totally fine for pretty much anything you would ever be using in terms of footage or files, unless you're using some kind of crazy high quality 10-bit YUV 422 4K, you know, 60 FPS footage, which I'll be honest, 99.9% .9 of people don't use. You're gonna be more than fine with these speeds. So what I wanted to show you now is just for reference, this is the speed you can expect from the internal drive on the Mac. So as you can see there, I mean, it's gonna be a lot quicker than what you're getting on this particular drive, but 
you know, if you want this thing, you really have to pay for it. If you wanted the two terabyte storage option inside your Mac, again, it's gonna be 800 US dollars, but you will be getting some incredibly high read and write speeds. And the other advantage is you don't need to lug this around. It's going to be internally on your Mac. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention is probably one of the biggest drawbacks of using an NVMe drive, especially in an external enclosure such as this, and that is heat. So with an NVMe drive, doesn't matter if it's SSD or PCIe, whatever it is, they're going to generate a lot of heat. So they're gonna get very warm. And this is generally only when you're writing a lot of data to it. Just everyday reading and writing, like I can play games off this thing, it'll barely get hot. I can edit off it, it'll barely be warm as well. But if I'm transferring like hundreds of gigabytes of files to this, it will get very hot, which is why I mentioned previously, you can heat treat this by using thermal pads to extract a little bit more heat. This isn't the biggest and most thermally efficient case. It's quite small and quite thin. Again, I'll be testing other cases that can dissipate heat more effectively in that other video I mentioned at the start of this video. But from my testing so far, this really doesn't seem too bad. I haven't run into many huge issues, but in the off chance you are transferring hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of files at once, it will slow down, it will thermal throttle, and you'll probably only get about half these speeds, so about three to 400 megabytes per second, which is still pretty good anyway. So what I wanted to do now is just do a quick little test. So we're gonna actually transfer some files onto the NVMe drive. So we're gonna to write to it and we're just gonna see how hot it gets. And also if we see a reduction in write speed due to thermal throttling. So we're gonna open up our NVMe drive and we're gonna get this test footage, which is about 130 gigabytes in size. Now, the reason why I've selected this file size is for those of you watching this video, you probably only have a 256 gigabyte hard drive. So this is probably the max amount of files and footage you're going to be writing on and off your internal SSD anyway. So this kind of makes sense having it this size. So if we drag this onto the NVMe SSD and then we open up the stats here, we'll get a little bit of a better look into how quickly it's going. So you can see there, we're writing at about 870 megabytes per second, which is very, very good. You can see there 130 gigabytes is only gonna take us about two minutes to write onto this drive. So that's very, very impressive. You can see here, we are actually hitting close to one gigabyte per second write speed. So right now it's at about 900 which is very, very impressive for such a relatively inexpensive device. Okay, so we've got a few seconds left. You can see here, we are still at almost 900 megabytes per second transfer speeds. You can see here on the actual graph, it hasn't dipped at all. And in terms of heat, it definitely is warm, but it's nowhere near uncomfortable. Uh, I would say it's probably about 30 to 35 degrees Celsius on the outside. so really not warm at all. Now in my testing, I've found that this thing starts to thermal throttle around four to 500 gigabytes. So if anything less than that, you're not gonna see any kind of decrease in the write speed. But for those times where you have to transfer like hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes, you're only gonna see about a 30 or 40% reduction in max speed. So it's very, very impressive from such a budget setup. Now, if you are transferring files from the NVMe SSD onto the internal drive of your Mac, you're gonna be seeing pretty much the exact same results. So right now we're getting about 860 megabytes per second. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in learning more about these drives, stay tuned on my channel. I'll have some more videos on this topic. If you have any comments or questions about things I mentioned or did in the video, leave them down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.